Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Katya. How are you? Teacher, I'm really bad. I have stomach ache. I don't know why. Mm. Because I, I have been under pressure. Mm -hmm. At work? Yes. What happened so, at work? You have a lot of new activities. Yes, in my school, the meetings today, tomorrow, another meeting. And I am the secretary and the first director of Lider de Santana. Um, okay. It's too much responsibility. So a lot of responsibilities, huh? And I am doing my thesis. Mm -hmm. I had the defense, I don't know. My defense in September. Mm -hmm. And I, I am nervous. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. And Katya, the defense is for your your bachelor's degree, your master's, for what? And doctoral. For, okay. No, doctoral. A lot of work, right? I guess, teacher. I am so <laughs> arrepentido. <laughs> <laughs> Um, How do you say that? <laughs> regretful. Re regret. Oh, yes. regret. Mm -hmm. I put, don't worry. So much work. Yeah. A lot it's of things. One year and miss two years more. Two, two years for what, Katya? Um, for finish my degree. Mm -hmm. You have two more years? Yes. Ah, okay. Wow. It's a long time, right? Four years. Okay. For the career. Yeah. It's pretty long. Yes, my little buddy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Little by little. That's the idea. Okay. All right. Well, Good luck, Katya. I, I hope you can do it. Thank you. It's, it's only about balance. You have to find the balance, and you, when you find the balance, you are able to do it. Yes, teacher. I know. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Today, we're going to go ahead and continue. We are looking at questions number four and six. We're going to start by reviewing a little bit. Um, we have a little video to help us because I know that sometimes it's a little difficult to remember each type of questions. Today, in, we're going to be practicing questions four and six. First, we're going to review how they are structured, how they are scored, and the best ways to get the most points for these questions. Let's go over speaking questions four and six, the integrated speaking questions about academic courses. Introduction, question structure, approach tips, scoring criteria, skill building tips. Now we're going to look at how questions are structured. Question four, read a passage, listen to lecture, 30 seconds to prepare, 60 seconds to speak. Here's generally what the question will look like and how they're structured. In question four, you will read a passage about academic subject. Then you will listen to part of a lecture on the same subject. You'll have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Okay. So question six. Remember, integrated is two parts. So we're going to have a part where you're going to listen to it, right? You're going to read. So the first part is question four, reading and then listening. Listen to lecture. 20 seconds to prepare, 60 seconds to speak. 
For question six, you will listen to part of a lecture. Then you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Question four. For question four, the reading passage will always be about an important academic term or concept that may be found in a first year college textbook. Then, when you answer the question, you will speak about how the example supports or illustrates the term or concept. For question six, the listening passage is an excerpt from an academic lecture on a single topic. Usually, it starts with the professor either defining a concept or highlighting an issue. Approach tips. Take notes while listening. Write down keywords or ideas. Review notes as you prepare your response. Don't repeat yourself to fill time. Say something to clarify, develop or elaborate. Practice timing yourself. Practice with academic text. You don't need prior knowledge of a specific fields. The questions test your English. Now here are some tips about how to approach these kinds of speaking questions. Number one, the topics for these questions can be from a variety of fields life science, social science, physical science, history, art, literature. And although it's important that you practice with academic texts, the questions are designed so that you don't need any prior knowledge in a specific field to answer the question. In other words, even though a question is about an academic topic, ultimately it is not testing your knowledge of that topic, it's testing your English. Okay, now I want us to stop a moment and go here. Yes, it's true. You are not tested on that topic. Is you don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be an engineer or a historian or whatever. But you have to have the vocabulary in English to understand it. That is the part where you have to be careful. No, you don't have to understand how the process for global warming works or how the science works for in the Amazon rainforest but you have to have the vocabulary to understand what they are saying. The vocabulary is not going to be technical in all of it, but they are going to have a few specific words for that category. That is probably the part where you have to be most careful with, is getting exposed to those, the variety of different texts and vocabulary, okay? I just want to make sure that it's clear that no, you don't have to know about the subject, but you have to be clear about it, okay? Now let's look at how they're going to grade it, how they're going to test it. The question is about an academic topic. Ultimately, it is not testing your knowledge of that topic, it's testing your English. Scoring criteria, zero to four. A score holistically. Before the test, make sure you understand what the raters are looking for and how the questions are scored. In the speaking section, all six responses are scored on a scale from zero to four. They are scored holistically, which means the raters listen to various features in your response and then give it an overall score. Scoring criteria, delivery, language use, topic development. Delivery, clear and fluid speech. Good pronunciation, natural pace, good intonation. Language use, use of grammar and vocabulary to express your ideas. Topic development, how fully you answer, how clearly you express your ideas, how you connect ideas. Skill building tips. Here are some activities that can help you build your skills for the integrated speaking tasks, especially number four and six about academic courses. Develop your academic vocabulary. Keep a list of new words and practice pronouncing them. This part is very important. If you want to do well in this speaking section, you need to have more academic vocabulary. No vocabulary like street and forest and trees and beach. You need vocabulary specific for the different contexts, right? Renaissance for art or uh, historical uh, engineering, the, the different vocabulary for each category. When you don't have the vocabulary, one of the techniques that you can use is recycle. This means use the vocabulary from the reading, use the vocabulary from the speaker. Try to use two or three of their words so that you have some academic vocabulary, even if you don't have a lot.
but then you can get a little bit better with those academic words. Teacher. Yes. Would you give us some academic vocabulary? And you have to study academic vocabulary from the different readings, the different literatures. So oh. one of the best ways to get it is from the website called TED. This is a lot because academic vocabulary is a lot of vocabulary. Hang on. But in this moment, I share with you a great place to expand yourself for more vocabulary. And then you select which topic. You can have topics for science, engineering, um, psychology, the different types, the one that you want to expand in, in the different areas. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So I don't give you the exact vocabulary and I'm going to show you why. Okay. Hang on. Okay. So when you go to the website um, that I mentioned, okay. It's going to look like this, but here you're going to go where it says discover and you're going to click topics. And here you decide what vocabulary you want. You have astronomy, you have architecture, archeology, span anthropology, um, an animation, biodiversity, blind is so much vocabulary is not a list. You have to, you have to go look. How many is each day? Each day you have to go and you have to do one or two, three or four. Imagine here they talk about neuroscience, NFTs, uh, machine learning, the, uh, all of the different things, natural disaster, even for natural disaster. Do you have the vocabulary? Do you know how to say, um, you know, inundaciones? Do you know how to say terremotos, temblores, sequías? Do, do you have this basic vocabulary for communication? If the answer is no, you have to spend the time in there and you have to expand it with the one that you are missing. Okay. Is that okay, Katya? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Remember, is you go and you decide, oh, I need more vocabulary for, for this, you go in there. I need more vocabulary for this one, you go to that one. Or if you say, I need all the vocabulary, whoosh, Begin today, <laughs> one, 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 and finish in December, mm -hmm. little by little. Okay. All right, let's continue with the rest of the video. Remember, that is the important part, developing your academic vocabulary and keeping a list of the new words. Not only read, ah, new word, no, new word, Write it down, write the synonym, write the meaning, use in a sentence, give an example. This is the way to learn new words. Not only have, oh, it's nice, the new word. Okay. Read an article and record a summary. Transcribe the recording and think of other ways to say the same thing. Okay, here is another couple of techniques. From, For example, the website that I gave you, you are going to read it. Exactly, you're going to read it. And then you are not going to write a summary. No, no writing. Look, record a summary. Record the summary. What are you saying? Then, after you record, then write. But no write new ideas. Listen to yourself. Take your cell phone. Listen. What did you say? And transcribe word for word. Si vos dijiste mm, vas a notar mm. Si vos dijiste eh, vas a notar eh. Word for word, exactly. Because you need to identify what your areas are, what your weaknesses are, and how to improve. That way you can practice again the next time. If you say, I, don't write I, pone I y puntos suspendidos, porque así estuviste. Um, well, eh, tu, 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 tu. That way you can see how you are speaking. That is the idea for read the article, record the art, the summary, and then listen and transcribe. It's okay the technique to build yourself for the speaking. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes, teacher. Find textbooks in English that include the study questions. Practice answering the questions out loud. Collect recording of yourself in an audio journal. 
Ask your English teacher to evaluate the recordings. Mm -hmm. So remember, collect it, record it, do it. That is the best way to get better. It's not easy because it takes time. If you want to pass and you want to get it, it is a matter of consistent practice and practice and going. Today, we're going to practice integrated questions number four and six. As you can see here, we're going to read like because it's integrated. You're going to read about it. You're going to take notes. Okay. Then you are going to prepare. Okay. As we can say, you have 30 seconds to prepare after reading. You have 30 seconds to prepare and you have 60 seconds to speak. Okay. Then you listen to the lecture of ocean plants and a marine biology and you answer the question. So one more time, read, listen, organize 30 seconds and then answer. The professor describes an experiment done by uh, phytoplankton. Explain how the implications of this experiment relate to phytoplankton. Mm. So always the important is have clear the vocabulary from instructions. Because if you don't understand the instructions, you are going to confuse. Oh, are they asking me to compare? Are they asking me to explain? Are they asking me to show contrast? Are they asking me for my personal opinion? This is the idea. So for example, in this question, what are they asking for? What are the instructions? What do they want you to say? To make a the implication. Mm -hmm. How the implication of this experiment what is the effect? Relate, relate, relate. Correct. The relationship. Relationship from the experiment, relationship to what they say, right? How the implications of this experiment relate to phytoplankton. So the idea is the professor describes it. So what do you do? Remember the structure. Number one, according to the article, ta 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 and the professor says the professor, uh, the professor's experiment relates to this by this, this, and this. It does not relate in this case. But remember, always organize first the reading, then the listening, and then whatever details you need. The same for the next one, right? The the important is we now we know what is the structure: reading, listening, preparing and answering, the same here, right? The same, reading, listening, preparing, and answering. Now, next one, the same thing, right? But in here, it's this one is different. This is the lecture of an agriculture class. So what are we going to use? Use points and examples from the lecture. Explain how goals are related to the spread of diversity, uh, sorry, desertification so here no reading only listening and answer here listening and answer as you can see there are four questions we have question number one a little bit long for the reading and listening question number two reading and listening questions numbers three and four only listening and answering are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So I see only Jarvin is oriented today. This means everybody else can participate. Is correct? Sorry. Yes. Sorry, okay. Sorry. Yes, go, tell me, tell me. <laughs> it was an animal. Ah, okay, Sandra, no problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's okay, it's okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, we're going to start, we're going to try to complete 
We're going to complete questions number one and two first. No, oh, ta, 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 ta. no. First, let's begin little by little, question one and two. Then we check if you have any questions or any doubts. And then we do questions three and four. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go. Um, hello, Katya. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, uh, can you share the screen or do you prefer me to do it? Mm. I, I haven't opened the platform. Okay, I will then. Let me I'm see. I'm going to try, but my computer is okay. a little <laughs> slow. Uh-huh. Oh my God, oh, oh. Hey, I'm not in my platform either. Let's see, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. There are many, okay, there are many words, okay. In, in a having the photic zone, the Upper layer of water where sunlight penetrates penetrates in the world of ocean ocean. Phytoplankton provide the basis the basis of almost all marine life, forming a greater abundance near land masses where there is a concentrate concentration of nutrients nutrients nutrients. In the weather, these single cell plants enrich the food chain. Sunlight provides them with the energy needed for photos, photosynthesis, turning the phosphates and nitrates, nitrates in the weather and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the molecular that they live on. The byproduct of photosynthesis, photosynthesis in oxygen, it is estimated that 75% of the world oxygen is produced by phyto, phytoplankton. Phytoplankton usually, usually go unnoticed, unnoticed until physical condition cause some species to bloom, a phenomenon no, as the real time. Okay. And then we need to listen that frequently. In the crater, abundance near land. Matches where there is a conscious concentration of nutrients in the water, the single salad plants enrich the food chain. Sunny pro provides mm -hmm. the, the water and carbon dioxide from the osmore into more obscure that they like the little photo sentence is oxen. Okay, is... The, the time is over, 30 seconds. The time is on. But the time is over, but in the practice, I continue to finish to read. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Continue. It is to make the seven five percent of the war oxygen is produced 
by photoplankton, py, phytoplankton using go or night say until physical condition cause some space to bloom upon on no as the red tide okay so that is necessary to read to listen selecting the answer or writing no um, it's necessary to 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 listen to audio oh okay. i think i can listen Oh. Okay, I'd like to discuss an interesting study being done on phytoplankton. I think we all know that phytoplankton is an important nutrient in the ocean's food chain, uh, as well as understand its importance in producing oxygen. Uh, this study, the study I want to present, was based on the observation that in some areas of the ocean there's plenty of sunlight and nitrogen compounds for a successful photosynthesis. However, there's only a small amount of phytoplankton. So an analysis was done on the water and this analysis indicated a lack of iron. We know that iron is a trace mineral that even humans need. It was hypothesized that phytoplankton also need iron. I won't go into full detail, but a small section of one area in the ocean was seeded with iron sulfate. The resulting increase of phytoplankton provided convincing evidence for the hypothesis. Now, this finding opens up several possibilities. Since phytoplankton take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, an increase of the plants could remove a significant amount of human-produced carbon dioxide from the atmosphere faster and more effectively than other alternatives. An increase in the plants could uh, also be followed by an increase of marine life along the food chain that ultimately comes to feed people. However, there are uh, unanswered environmental questions that would need to be addressed before phytoplankton farms could be considered. Hi, um, uh, are you ready to, to speak, uh, Katia? Hi. Well, uh, I will do my, my summary is that is what to phytoplankton is is something that uh, appears at the oceans and and they have helped uh, really I just well uh, they, they produce some nutrients under the water areas of the ocean and then um it shows that the carbon the phytoplankton produces a lot of carbon dioxide to help the to help to sorry it helps to reduce the carbon dioxide so this can help marine life and us as well that was what i understand 
<laughs> yes, wonderful. <laughs> okay, for me, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> okay, more than one minute. Okay. Yes. Continue with the others, okay. Who wants to read, Jenny or Nicole? Jenny, can you read? Okay. Rogue sign and marking are a uh, ubiquitous feature of stones and cities around the world. The purpose of this system is to ensure the safety of both diverse and pedestrians by separate, separating them and by controlling traffic, traffic speed and flow. Drivers are obligated to restrict their speed for direction and park and stop only in the signing area. Pedestrians are further protected by race sidewalk from which motor traffic is restricted. At road intersections, motor vehicle movement is strictly managed by traffic lights and road markings. They requirement of road users to obey road markings, signs, and signals it backs up by legal sanctions level against those who ignore the traffic roads. Okay. Now we listen. Okay. okay, so we're all familiar with the road markings, signs, and signals cluttering up our cities. They are supposed to reduce accidents, make towns safer for all of us. Well, accidents still happen, but all these signs surely make accidents fewer. They tell road users where it's safe to be and when. Well, um, experiments have shown something very different. A Dutch traffic engineer named uh, Hans Monderman has turned this thinking on its head. Monderman removed the traffic signs, markings, and signals from a Dutch town. And uh, guess what? The number of traffic accidents has dropped significantly. In this town, there are no center lines separating lanes, no speed limit signs, uh, no stop signs, and, and even speed bumps have been removed. The thinking behind this radical change is that when drivers have no signs to guide them, they start looking at people, and then they drive more carefully, more courteously. This public space makes drivers instinctively understand that cars and pedestrians are equal, and drive with this in mind. Supporters of this scheme explain its success by arguing that road regulations give a false sense of security. Regulations also treat road users as irresponsible by continually controlling their behavior, telling them what they can and can't do. When the props supporting this regulation are removed, drivers are given back the responsibility for driving with consideration for other drivers and, and pedestrians, and, and then act accordingly. Okay, we need to respond about the explain how how this experiment is related to road user behavior. Describe an experimental system of road management. Okay, he talk about the the experience in the other country, the Dutch, Dutch, um, is more safe. Safe? Well, experiments have shown something very different. A Dutch traffic engineer named uh, Hans Monderman has turned this thinking on its head. Monderman removed the traffic signs, markings, and signals from a Dutch town. And uh, guess what? The number of traffic accidents has dropped significantly. In this town, there are 
no center lines separating lanes, no speed limit signs, uh, no stop signs, and, and even speed bumps have been removed. The thinking behind this radical change is that when drivers have no signs to guide them, they start looking at people and then they drive more carefully, more courteously. This public space makes drivers instinctively understand that cars and pedestrians are equal and drive with this in mind. Supporters of this scheme explain its success by arguing that road regulations give a false sense of security. Regulations also treat road users as irresponsible by continually controlling their behavior. Okay, so very nice. I see everyone finished question number one. Some of you were in question number two and almost there. So in this moment, I'd like to listen and see how you're doing each one individually. So I want you to give me the answer to question number one. We're going to begin with Nicole. Nicole is going to answer question number one. Okay, so I have my timer here, Nicole. I'm going to give you one minute and to see how you're doing with your speaking. One minute timer. Okay. So, the professor describes an experiment done on phytoplankton. Explain how the implications of this experiment relate to the phytoplanktons. You have 30 seconds to prepare. Okay, should I start now? Oh, well, <laughs> okay. So no, not, yet, not yet. You have 30 seconds to prepare. Organize your ideas. Okay. Please begin speaking after the beep. Beep. Okay. I was able to understand that freedom plankton is important for the food chain and it produces a lot of oxygen. The study was about that in some areas on the ocean, there is plenty of sunlight and nitrogen compost to make a successful photosynthesis, but it was just a little film plankton. They analyzed the water and it was discovered that this was related to the lack of iron. The lack of iron made that little, uh, it reduces the phytoplankton because the phytoplankton needs a lot of iron to, to increase. Um, also the phytoplankton help us to reduce the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So that can help us to, for the marine food to, to increase and for us to, to have a plenty life. And that's all. Okay, so Nicole, that is, Thank you for trying. Do not do that. Do not do that in the recording. Do not say, that is all. That is not good. Remember, you have to speak until the time finishes. You're going to hear beep, and then you it's going to be cut off. But remember, the idea is to stay on the topic and go. What you need to practice, Nicole, is more organization. Your ideas are here for here, the speaker, here for the other, for this. And there is no clear goal of where you're getting the information from. So we're going to try to work a little bit more on that. Okay, Nicole? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Yancy, you are next. Okay, the same question. You have 30 no, seconds to teacher. prepare. For me, no, teacher. <laughs> I'm nervous. No. No, teacher. Uh -huh. Please, another. <laughs> another another person. Okay, Yancy, no problem. Yes, please. It's okay. It's okay, Yancy. No problem. All right, Sandra, you are next. You have 30 seconds to prepare. You don't Because I, I, I didn't understand all the, all the listening. That is why I don't have enough lexic to, to express okay so no the same for you no 
Okay, no problem, Sandra. Okay, let's go okay. to the next one. The next one is William. William, are you ready? William Alexander Ramirez. Mm -hmm. I don't know William. Maybe he went to the bathroom because not answer the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jenny Campos, are you ready? Ah, William is driving. Ah, William didn't. William, remember, no problem. But next time, put oyente in your name. That way, it's easy. That way, we don't worry about it. Thank you, William. I got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jenny, you ready? Uh, the, the reading. Okay. Talking about the, the pitoplanto provide okay. the basics of us. Almost basic of almost all marine life, and talking about the the photosynthesis that the sunlight provides. Sunlight provides the energy for the plants, and the relation to phytoplankton and what the professor say is that they have life in the plants and the and the water. Okay, thank you, Jenny. We need to work. Um, thank you for trying. I I congratulate you for making the effort. Don't worry, it's good. The more you practice, the better you get. You need to work on your fluency and your organization of the vocabulary and ideas because your ideas are only words. You need to create sentences and create structure in order to get more points, okay? Okay. Good. Okay, good. No problem, okay. Uh, let me see who was next, I forgot. Uh, I think Katya, Katya was the next. Uh, I'm not ready to hear. No, Katya, Katya, no, okay. Rodrigo, you ready? Yeah. Rodrigo? It's the uh, not preparation. No prepare. Okay, no problem, Rodrigo. Okay. Uh, we have Jarvin as a listener and Daniel. Daniel, are you ready? Hi, I'm going to try it. Okay, Daniel, excellent. In this case, you have 30 seconds um, in order to organize your ideas. Okay. The same exercise, right? The same exercise, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please begin recording your answer after the beep. Beep. Well, I understand that in first place, it, it was discovered that phytoplankton need iron to survive. And then in an important study, and it was discovered that this plant produce much of the oxygen that we need, uh, 75%. And so it's determined that it can be very important to grow up more of this plant because they will help uh, they, they will have help us produce more oxygen and, and more when the whole plant is about to succumb. And we have more pol uh, pollutant than we have elements that help reduce this pollution. But before growing more Please. of this plant. Thank you very much. 
All right, Daniel. Thank you for trying. Great job. Daniel, good. We just have to work on your fluency right now, but you're doing a good job of comprehension, understanding what they're talking about. We do have to work a little bit more is the difference because you are speaking, but it's not clear. Are you talking about the article? Are you talking about the listening? Are you talking and you are you are giving the information, but it's because I listened and I read the article, but the person only listened to you is confusing where you're getting all the information is like one experiment. That's where we need to structure. Okay, Daniel? I get it. I okay, get it. perfect. All right. So now we go with our partners. We continue again. Remember, we have questions number four, number three and four. Three and four were listening. Okay, three and four were listening right here. Here we have the listening and we have to answer the question, right? Um, Instruction, listen to part of the lecture in a criminal class, right? Using points and examples from the lecture, explain how goals are related to the spread of the certification. That's it. So in the next one, the same thing. Uh, using specific information from the lecture, explain the professor's concerns about changing the system, okay? And what needs to be done before reforms are made. Now, if you did not, if you did not finish question number two here, Please finish. Remember, the goal not is to complete. The goal is to learn to practice. That way, when you have to do the exam, you can do it correctly. This is the important. No, I, I finished. No, do correctly. Organize, structure. Remember, like me, your partner, watch the time. Watch the time. Beep. Okay. The partner eh, finished speaking. Okay. The partner didn't finish. Um, Eso es todo. No. No, no, no. One minute, one minute. The partner has to understand how much time they lose. It's okay? It's okay. Okay. Let's practice a little bit more. Don't worry. The important is get used to the structure of the exam. That is the hardest part. Let's do it. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. To scream. Are you going to share the screen? This one, using points and examples from the lecture, explain how goals are related to the spread of the certification. Okay. We have to listen to the audio. Let me start sharing my audio. Since goats can survive on kinds of vegetation such as bushes and desert scrub, which are unsuitable for other domesticated herd animals, they're a logical means of subsistence for millions of rural inhabitants the world over. They're a valuable resource for milk and meat and can survive where other animals would starve. However, goats have also done considerable damage to delicate ecosystems, particularly those areas in danger of turning into deserts. Uh, the owners of goats have not kept a balance between goat numbers and the available vegetation, and because of that, overgrazing by goats has destroyed areas of bushes, desert scrub, and herbs, as well as woodland in sensitive environments. This animal does not discriminate about where it gets its nourishment and often will eat newly germinated plants, thus preventing the establishment of new vegetation. Also, goats destroy woody plants, 
In other words, the kind of vegetation whose roots are important for stabilizing the soil. Now, plants need soil to anchor their roots and to provide them with water and nutrients, and the soil needs plants to provide the biological material from which new soil is created. Plants also hold the soil together, stopping it from being driven away by wind and rain. We can say that overgrazing by goats is one of the prime causes of the spread of deserts. Of course, it's not the goat itself that's to blame for the spread of desertification. It's the poor management of the animals that's responsible. What's needed is a large-scale educational program on the importance of soil conservation and the spread of techniques for properly managing grazing animals. Okay, so look at the question so that you remember what you need to answer. Prepare yourself 30 seconds and then answer for one minute. Sure, let me try to go back. It's the, no, no, not that one, the next one. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rice size wall from which motor traffic and logistic as road interstation motor beside call moment movement is just riding managed by traffic light and road making the requirement of road user to obey, obey road marking signs and signals is baked up by legal sensation leveled again to co ignorate the traffic rules. Is um uh, is answering is protecting the drivers. Yes. The signal spread of techniques properly managing grazing animals. Okay. Do you have okay. some ideas about yeah? Twenty seconds. To think about it. To think. Mm. I also have beep. 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 Well, they are speaking about uh, the importance of having bushes in um, say, uh, several plants to. To have uh, um, many animals, and the animals can provide the milk and, and meat. Uh, but uh, uh, it is very important to conserve this, the soil uh, because the soil needs plants to produce nutrients and water too. And uh, everybody have to. To, to take care of animals more than than, than ever because uh, they are a uh, like uh, well, experiments have shown something very different a dutch traffic engineer named uh, hans monderman has turned this thinking on its head monderman removed the traffic signs, markings, and signals from a Dutch town. And uh, guess what? The number of traffic accidents has dropped significantly. In this town, there are 
No center lines separating lanes. No speed limit signs. Uh, no stop signs. And, and even speed bumps have been removed. The thinking behind this radical change is that when drivers have no signs to guide them, they start looking at people, and then they drive more carefully, more courteously. This public space makes drivers instinctively understand that cars and pedestrians are equal and drive with this in mind. Supporters of the scheme explain its success by arguing that road regulations give a false sense of security. Regulations also treat road users as irresponsible by continually controlling their behavior, telling them what they can and can't do. When the props supporting this regulation are removed, drivers are given back the responsibility for driving with consideration for other drivers and, and pedestrians, and, and then act accordingly. Okay. The professor described an experimental system of road management. Explain how to spare is related to road user behavior. It's a similar in the paragraph. I think he's in the audio. This is a lot of information. Okay, so shall we go to the next question? The others, okay. Second one. Using a specific information from the lecture, explain the professor concern about changing the used system and what needs to be done before you know, reforms are made. Amen. You must listen to the audio. As you know, the basic principle of the American juvenile justice system is that children are different from adults. And it follows that the way the justice system deals with children should reflect these differences. When the principle was established, it provided for the individualizing of treatment and services to vulnerable children. However, this system is under threat. Critics say it's not tough enough and also it fails to rehabilitate children. And some of you may agree. After all, criminal statistics point to a steadily increasing problem of youngsters committing crimes. But my concern is that young offenders may start to be treated as adults. Before any reforms are made, a rational examination of the whole system needs to be undertaken. As I see it, there are three key areas of research. The first is accountability. Okay, so in other words, how are juveniles different from adults in their understanding of criminal behavior? How do we assess their responsibility? Secondly, we need to evaluate risk, risk evaluation. So this means, how can we determine the chances of a given youth committing a crime? And how can we use this information to prevent the crime in the first place? The third area of research Okay, so I'm glad that we had the opportunity to practice. As you can see, it's very important that you get the clear ideas of how to do everything. 
We only had four questions today, but whoosh, <laughs> one hour listening, uh, reading, listening, answering, practicing. Is remember the objective is learn, practice, and get used to it. It's okay we make mistakes. The important is we learn from our mistakes and we do better the next time. Tomorrow we're going to practice both types of questions. We're going to practice both the num questions number three and five and questions number four and six. Okay. All right. Thank you Hi. so much. Thank you so much for joining. Tomorrow we practice, and then you have another opportunity to try again to do better. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you guys tomorrow. Good night. See you. Bye.